Hi, this is Ms. Black with Algebra 2 Open Campus for Bipsy, and we are now going to Module 10. We are working today with operations of rational expressions. Today we will be talking about multiplication and division of fractions, which again are called rational expressions. So let's go to the whiteboard. The easiest way to understand how to multiply rational expressions in algebra is again to go back to arithmetic. So this is our first example in our class notes. It's algebra. These are rational expressions, fractions. Before we do this, let's take out the variables and just look at the numbers. Let's go back to fifth and sixth grade math. How do we multiply fractions? Well, we've been singing all semester. Multiplying fractions is no problem. Top times top, bottom times bottom. So technically, we're supposed to take the numerator and multiply it and the denominator. So let's do that. 4 times 10 is 40. 40 times 15. Well, I know 4 times 15 is 60. So 40 times 15 would be 600. Now we're going to multiply the denominator. Again, it doesn't matter what order you do this in. So I'm going to group it together. I'm going to do 5 times 24 first because I can do that. 5 times 24 is 120. Then I have to do 120 times 15. Well, I happen to know 12 times 15 is 180. So 120 times 15 would be 1,800. Now, can this be the final answer? No, because we know with fractions that bar means to do division. So we get to divide 600 by 1,800. Well, we all know in arithmetic if a number ends in two zeros, we could divide it by 100. So 600 divided by 100 is 6. 1,800 divided by 100 is 18, but that's still not in lowest terms. 6 and 18 can both be divided by what? The biggest number is not 2, it's not 3, it's 6. So 6 divided by 6 is 1, 18 divided by 6 is 3. Now, back in elementary school, you should have learned there's another way to get this answer without doing all this big arithmetic. This was called in elementary school cross-cancel. Now, let's understand what's going on here. These dots mean to multiply. These bars mean to divide. We've been discussing all along order of operations. Multiplication and division are equal, which means it doesn't matter which one you do first. So wouldn't it be better to divide first and make the numbers smaller than to multiply and make them big. So that's what we're going to do when we do multiplication of fractions. Before we start to multiply, we're going to want to divide first. In elementary school, that was called cross-cancel. Now, I have a problem with that name because when you hear cross-cancel, you think about just going diagonally, and that's not how it works. To cancel, one number's got to be in the numerator and one number's got to be in the denominator. And you just got to divide them by the same amount. So we start. Can we divide 4 by, and 15? No. We go here. Can we divide 10 and 24? Sure we can. We can divide them both by 2. 2 goes into 10 5 times. 2 goes into 24 12 times. We come to this third fraction. Can we divide 15 and 5 by the same number? Sure we can. 5. 5 goes into 15 3 times. 5 goes into 5 once. So the first thing is canceling is just doing division. Secondly, to do division, one number's got to be in the numerator, one number's got to be in the denominator. They can be above each other and below each other. But I'm not done. I can also do this now diagonally. That's where the word cross comes from. What can we divide 4 into? 12. How many 4's go into 12? 3. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 4 goes into 12 3 times. 5. What can I divide 5 by? Oh. 15. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 goes into 15 3 times. This numerator is a 3. What can I divide 3 into? I have a 3 in both positions. Doesn't matter which one you do. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. If you look now, we've done as much dividing and reducing as we can. Now if you do the rule top times top, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. Bottom times bottom, 
three times one times one is three. So the moral of today's lesson is going to be, before you multiply and make the numbers big, let's reduce, let's divide first. It doesn't have to go diagonally, as long as one's in the numerator and one's in the denominator. So now let's take example one in our notes, okay? This is how I start. I start with the first numerator. I look and see what can I divide 4x cubed? Because this is a multiplication, I can take it apart. 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 24 six times. x cubed can divide by x squared. 3 take away 2 is 1. So this will be gone, and this will leave us with an x. I go to the next numerator, 10. I see what I can divide it by. Well, wait, 10 can divide by 5. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 10 twice. I have an x. Well, there are no more x's left in the denominator, so I have to keep that. I have a y. I could divide it by y to the fourth. Take that one away, take one from four, and I'm left with three. I go to the next numerator. I have a 15. 15 can divide by 15, and that would cancel out. It's the same thing. I could take this y and divide it by y cubed. Take that one away, it's gone. One from y cubed is y squared. Now look, is everything reduced? Well, I'm not completely done. I still have a 2 up here, and I see a 2 can divide into 6. So just remember, reducing, canceling can go either diagonally or up or down. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 three times. All right, the hardest part now is paying attention and making sure you get everything. In your numerator, you have a 1, an x, an x, a 1. Well, guys, 1 times 1 is 1. What's x times x? x squared. If you look in the denominator, I have a y squared, a 3, and a 1. Well, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times y squared is 3y squared. So the rule is, multiplying fractions is no problem. Top times top, bottom times bottom. But before you start to multiply, we're going to first divide. Now, let's take one that's a little bit more complicated. In your class notes, let's look at example three. Example three says a squared minus 64 over 9a plus 72 times 8a over 8a squared minus 64a. Now, this is all a thinking process. There are two fractions here, two rational expressions. You have to look and see what that symbol is. That operation is multiplication. I want you to multiply these. Think about it. Do you really want to take this binomial and multiply by this monomial doing the distributive property? Do you want to multiply this binomial to this binomial doing FOIL? That would be way too much work. So we have to understand, this is multiply, but these bars mean to divide. So before you ever start to multiply, we're going to divide first because they're equal. But now we got a problem because we've already talked about it. Can you divide if you're connected by addition and subtraction? No, you cannot. You can only divide when everybody is connected by multiplication. But wait a minute. We know how to make multiplication in algebra. We're going to use our factoring skills. So my song for today goes, multiplying fractions is no problem. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Before you start to multiply, factor first, then divide. When algebra, we are never going to multiply first. We are going to factor so we can divide. So now we're going to use our factoring skills. How do we factor a squared minus 64? Well, you should all know that's difference of perfect squares. So we're going to put two parentheses. What times itself is a squared? a. What times itself is 64? 8. Our symbols are a plus and minus. We're going to go to the denominator. Well, how do you factor 9a plus 72? Oh, there's a GCF. They can both be divided by 9. What's going to leave us with? and a plus 8. 
you go to the second fraction. You don't factor 8a because 8a is a monomial. It's already connected by multiplication. And that's what the word factoring means. Make sure it's multiplication. Well, that's this already. We're going to factor 8a squared minus 64a. Now, this is the one that gives you all the most problems because you see the a squared and you automatically want to put two parentheses and do the trinomial rule. It is not the trinomial rule. There are only two terms here. So we discussed this. What is always the first rule of factoring? GCF. What do they have in common we can divide them by? 8a. What does that leave us with? An a minus 8. Now that everybody, every term is connected by multiplication, a plus 8 times a minus 8, you can now divide. And here's the fun part. It's just like reducing fractions. You're looking for something that's the same on the top and bottom to cancel out. Well, a plus 8 and a plus 8 are the same binomial. You would divide them and make a 1. You could put the 1 there, but it's not important because 1 times anything is not going to change your answer. So that's why we don't write the 1's in algebra. What else is the same that can divide out? a minus 8 and a minus 8 is the same binomial. It cancels out. Look. 8a and 8a are the same monomial. So that's before you ever multiply a fraction and make it huge. You are going to factor and then divide. Now all you got to do is look and see what's left. Everything is canceled out in the numerator, so you put the 1, because that's what you're doing. Something divided by itself is 1. There are 1s. But in the denominator, you're left with 9. And that's what that happens. When we multiply these two algebraic fractions, we would get the number one ninth. Hope you understood that. Have a great day.